Banana Man. What's going on, everybody? Jay Hayes here. Today we're doing a review on a device I picked up for the purposes of the review. How Geek Vape, how they love me so. So let me just give you a little bit of a back brief on this company. Everybody knows Geek Vape in the world today. Back in the day, they weren't really known too well. They kind of did a Griffin RTA. They did a couple little things here and there, but nothing that really put them on the chart where people were like, whoa, that's Geek Vape, that's nice. There was, there was nobody that was doing that. And if there were people that were doing it, it was only people that built RTAs. The thing is with Geek Vape, I can't really tell you the first mod that really put them on the the block. What I do know though is that when they came out with their Aegis, a lot of people heard about Geek Vape. Just because it was an indestructible device, you could do whatever the hell you want with it. For lack of better terms, obviously you couldn't throw it up 100 feet from the ground and then let it hit and it'd be fine. You know, listen, it's just like anything else. It's going to break and there's always a breaking point to everything. So they made the Geek Vape Aegis, which was very, very successful. That was a 26650. They also made an adapter, so you're able to use a 2700. Then they made the dual battery one, which I never did the review on. I don't know, there was just something about it that didn't interest me. Probably because it looked a lot like a Lost Vape product and well, I just, I didn't have much of a reason to do the review because I already did the review on a 2650. However, I was not gonna pass this up. When someone told me about this, I was automatically inclined like, okay, this is gonna be pretty badass. We got a little mini version of something that was indestructible, an 18650, I'm super pumped up. Well, I guess I don't know how to fucking read websites because this is not an 18650 and this is also not an external battery. It's all built in. Light bulb batteries by default, by their nature, is not good with taking impact. However, the Aegis is designed to take impact. So they took something that wasn't designed to take any kind of impact and then they took something, their, their Aegis, which was designed for non-destructive purposes. Okay, either I missed the memo or someone over at Geek Vape doesn't know what the hell is going on. This would have been so much friggin' cooler if you used an external battery. However, it does not. I don't want to ruin it. Let me bring it down, show you everything inside of the box. Keep in mind, if you already own an Aegis, whether that be the single 26 or the dual 18650, you're already going to know how this menu is going to function. The deciding factor of you picking up this device is probably, okay, do I want to upgrade a 26650 or downgrade to an internal battery? One of the biggest problems I have with any kind of internal battery, not specifically this one, is battery life. After so many charges, it's going to deplete the battery. Then you could try to discharge it all the way, then recharge it back up, but it's always going to be shitty once it gets to shit. That's just how LiPo works. It's the same thing with lithium ion batteries. After an 18650, they do have cycle references. For instance, some, I don't want to get into the details or schematics of it, but there's some batteries that can only take 300 charges. There's some that can take 500. And they say after it's been charged that many times, throw the battery away and do something else. Well, with a light bulb battery, you don't have that option. With a light bulb battery, you throw the box mod away and then that's lost money. So when you buy a LiPo device, you're supposed to buy more than one, which again, kind of sucks. Let's just say hypothetically, you don't know if you're gonna like it or not. You end up buying two and the place that you bought it at doesn't do returns. I could promise you this, Geek Vape ain't gonna give a shit about that. Let me just show you everything inside of the box, show you how it works, put something on top of it. I am gonna try to go outside and break this a little bit just because, well, it is an Aegis Mini. It's just, I don't know if I wanna do that because of the built-in battery and the situation I had with the Wizmec Active. I guess we'll figure that out when I bring it back down. It's supposed to be anti-destructive. Let's flip it. Geek Vape Aegis Mini Kit. So keep in mind, this is a kit rendition. You're gonna get the box mount, also a tank on the top. And then down here on the bottom, you got some information. This says eight fire watts. That's, I, that probably means something else. 2200 MAH, I guess that's waterproof and that's shockproof. I don't know what that is. I think that's grade eight of the military scale. I'm probably 100% wrong. Powered by AS80 chipset. That may be something that they have created as well. On the top side of the mod, nothing but Geek Vape on the bottom. Geek Vape again on the side. A little bit of social media information for you. You got Geek Vape and then their Instagram. On the side, you're gonna have your Facebook, Instagram, and name of the company. On the other side, you're gonna have just the name of the mod. On the flip side of it, baseball card stat sheet, give that a freeze frame so you give that a read. 
This section right here, I'm a little pumped up about. I don't think I've ever done a review for anything called the Cerberus Tank Atomizer. I know I did something for the Kalabala or the Calabus. I know I did something that has that same name, but I'm always interested to find out a new sub-ohm tank and then new coils that essentially come with it, said such tank. On the bottom of the box, we have a UPC, another UPC here, and then a scratch and sniff. This is going to be Italian cookie pine nut, flavor and scented. Open it up, here we go. There's the box. Yeah, that's cute. Take that out, cover that shortly. Let me just tell you what a lot of these companies need to do. Add a little tab that I could grab this and pull this up. Instead of worrying about how I could get my fingers in there, whether fat or skinny, to grab this to pull this up, because these are not fun at all. Like I hate packages that are this tight. Or you just grab a screwdriver like I just did. Okay, on the bottom of the box, you're gonna have the sub ohm tank. We'll go over that shortly. Inside the box on the bottom, you're gonna have a little pamphlet, which is gonna have a wide plethora of different business cards inside of it. Aegis Mini, and then on the flip side of that, I guess that's the Alpha Tank. Don't know what that is. Maybe that's something that's coming out in the future. Purchase information or warranty information for Geek Vape products. This is one of those companies I can't really speak a lot on. I don't know a lot of people that have had issues with Geek Vape and whether or not Geek Vape, in fact, did fix the issue and if it was in fact covered by warranty. A warning card, nothing on the flip side, and then my goodness, that is a user manual. That is literally a book. Eight languages inside this little manual. I don't know why you need to go over it that much. Well, I guess we could figure out what that eight is on the screen. I don't really have a lot of information about the numbers that are on the front of the box. Also on the bottom of the box, you're gonna get another box, and then inside of that is going to be a spare coil, some extra O-rings, a micro USB, a straight barrel glass if you don't want to use the bubble, and then a silica gel packet. Don't eat this if you want to survive. Drip tip on the top looks super sexy, looks really nice, almost looks like it's got a dual thing going on. However, keep in mind that this drip tip is very, very much cut in half. If you'd use your own drip tip on this, you may have a bit of a problem with the way that it looks just because of this ring right here. It has to match the outside of the 810 drip tip that you put inside of it. So it's not that terrible looking and it does look pretty good for what it is by default. It says Cerberus right there on the top section. To fill this tank up, you're just gonna grab up here. We have these facets and give it a good half turn. Opens up, there it is. And then get again to close it up. Lovely silicone O-rings. Don't know why companies are doing this. Airflow on the bottom of the tank is a little tight. If you go all the way to the left, it's gonna lock it closed. And if you go all the way to the right, it's gonna lock it open. Now, I don't know if you see what I see, but I could see some funky monkeys inside of there. The problem you may run into though is disassembling that to clean that. I know you see that because I see that. See it right there in the airflow? Dirty, dirty. And one of the problems you may run into with most sub ohm tanks is they're very difficult to disassemble because a lot of it is press fitted. So you're gonna have to rely on Geek Vape to keep it real and not give you the funky monkeys inside of your sub ohm tank. So the first thing I wanna do is test whether or not a Baby Beast coil works in this because that's always something that I have as a deciding factor about my purple pennies. Baby Beast does screw into the base yet again screws directly into it. So if you don't like the coils that Geek Vape provide with the Cerberus, you are able to use your baby base coils. That's a good thing, man. I, re I really enjoy that when companies are doing that. So the two coils that it comes with, this is the coil that was inside the tank. This is the coil that is outside the tank as a spare. They're literally the same exact coil. Mesh X2 Canthal 1. Yeah, I'm pumped. 0.3, simple enough. Exactly the same on the inside. So what you're going to want to do is anytime you get a brand new starter kit, just go ahead and get a little bit of juice because a little dab will do you. Put that right there on the top, start breaking that in. There's very little bit of cotton here. So if you put too much juice in there, don't be surprised if it does leak out a little bit out of the airflow. So just try to keep it real and keep it sexy. Don't go too crazy. And we're just going to let that sit just like that and let that sit for about five minutes. This is the mod. Super cute. Really, really compact. Take a look at the 510 on the top of that. I can't tell you how much this makes me love a mod, is when you're able to use something extremely large, like a 28 on a built-in battery box mod. Look at that. Yeah, that looks good. That does, 100%. So with the menu, there's really nothing too crazy going on. Maybe a little bit difficult for you to see any parts of the screen. If you press the fire and the up or the fire and the down, that's going to open up the brightness. Then when you let it go, it just kind of locks in that brightness. Then you press the down and the fire, same thing again. You see how when I let go of it? There you go. Very, very simple. If you wanna lock the power, you're just gonna press the up and down together. 
that allows you to fire it, but you cannot actually adjust it. It locks it right where it's at. Press it again. If you want to cycle three, you're gonna do one, two, three. You have power, nickel, stainless steel, titanium, TCR, VPC, which is a power curve, bypass, which acts as a mech mod. Once you have that selected, it allows you to go down the list. Then you have coil, no coil detected. And then when you have what you want selected, just hold the power button down, and then that's going to lock it into place. It's that simple. New coil, of course, yes. And it does round robin, very nice. So once again, that is the Geek Vape Mini Aegis Kit. Let's bring it on the top. Back on top with the Geek Vape Aegis Mini and the Cerberus sub -ohm tank sitting on the top of that. Let me show you some vape production, 44.5 watts on a .34. Here we go. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yo, holy cow. First off, the sub on tank of this thing is absolutely amazing. Really, really good flavor on those coils. And what's really cool is let's just say you have a Baby Beast and you don't like any of the coils. Typically, most tanks that are compatible with Baby Beast, you could use those coils inside of something like this. If you have a Baby Beast and you're not getting the best amount of flavor, you could use the coils that come with this and replace the Baby Beast coils. Although the sub tank being fantastic on this, I just don't understand the market that they were going for. If they were going for the market of being indestructible and being compact and something with a built-in battery where you don't have to worry about it, there's a couple flaws with that. When something is indestructible, that just means to me, it's gonna last the test of time. But because this has a lipo in it, it's not gonna last that long. It's only gonna last X amount of charges and then the batteries are gonna be depleted. Now I'm pretty damn sure that Geek Vape isn't gonna take old Aegis Minis and put new batteries in them and they're also not going to make it compatible with putting your own battery inside of it just the way that it's designed the odd thing is if you were to take an 18650 and hold it side by side of this you could essentially get away with using it but they didn't they decided to keep the 2200 that's built into this when you could get 18650s that have 2500 i don't know the market that they were going for now i'm going to tell you the way that this feels is nice man it's compact it works if you do want to put a 28 millimeter you are able Able to use it on this that sub bomb tank is on fire like that is literally amazing wow let me put it to you like this if you're looking for something that's a built-in battery that is going to be able to fall and you shouldn't have to worry about it breaking or if you're just looking for something that's a built-in battery that you could carry around you could beat up and you don't have to worry about it stop working then this would be a good option. Let's put a scenario out there. Let's just say I go down the shore, whatever, I'm riding my bike all damn day, and I got this mod with me. I can't carry around an extra battery because it's built in. So that tells me not to leave the house with this. Unless, of course, you're only using it when you're in your car driving back and forth from work, then it shouldn't be that big of a deal. But if it's something that you're gonna carry all damn day, this is gonna be impossible for you to charge unless you carry around a power bank. And at that point, why not just have a single 18650 or 2700 mod that you could carry around an extra battery? I wish that I could give you more of a select group of people that would like this. I would say roofers or people with a rigorous job, but at that point I'd recommend the Aegis over the Aegis Mini just because of the battery that's inside of this. Let me put it to you like this. If you're just getting into vaping and you don't want the hassle of carrying around an 18650, then this is a very, very good option. For a starter kit as a whole, I'm going to give this a 6.57. I would probably go up to 8 if it was a single 18650. And I wouldn't use the argument of it not being a 2700 just because, well, they're trying to make it as compact as possible. And if I was to rate the sub on tank by itself, I'd probably give it a 6, 6.5-ish. As much as I want to test this and throwing it around, we know how the regular Aegis stood up, so I'm not going to do with this primarily because it's a built-in battery and it's not good to be throwing built-in batteries around, not expecting something terrible to happen. So all in all, it's a solid starter kit for what it is. And I've kept it real. Have you? Check it out.